Okay, so this is going to be my third and final video about Celestial, Esther, unless the Holy Spirit instructs me otherwise. The first video that I did was just simply pointing out how she was wrong about saying that Marcus was a Freemason. And I don't say that from knowing Marcus from afar, I know him personally. And I've known him personally for years. And I used to be in the Masons. There are things that Marcus does that the Masons won't allow. You cannot speak against the Masons and promote Jesus the way that he does and be in the Masons. You can be in the Masons and have a Bible and say you're a Christian, but when you start calling stuff out and you speak against the Masons themselves, you can't do it. Well, Ty, you don't know what you're talking about. Yes, I do, because I used to be in the Masons. Well, Ty, you're still in the Masons. No, I'm not. They make videos about me right now. Angry at what I say. The next video was that she said that we don't have a birthright to hope in the end times. Basically, it's not her job to comfort. This was my thing with that when I did that video. God does speak judgment. And when he's speaking judgment to unbelievers, there is no comfort in it at all. In fact, the unbeliever does not need to be comforted. The unbeliever has the wrath of God waiting on them. And I don't have an issue with descriptive prophetic words of things that happen. You read the Bible, you see it all throughout the Bible. Zechariah 14 and other places of descriptive prophetic words. And I mean descriptive. America is going to face judgment. America will be overran by military. Famine is coming to America. With all of that being said, when you're speaking to believers in Christ and you're prophesying to believers, this is what the Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians 14, 3. But the one who prophesies speaks edification and exhortation and comfort to men. The Greek word that's used here for comfort means encouragement, comfort, consolation, literally comforting. He then says a person who speaks in tongues is strengthened personally. But one who speaks a word of prophecy strengthens the entire church. Comfort is a part of this. If you have somebody that consistently prophesies, right? And they say that they're a Christian, yet their messages consistently lack comfort for the church. I'm not talking about minor individuals that go to church that may be walking in sin. No, I'm speaking of the bride of Christ as a whole. And they don't offer comfort and things as such to the bride. Because you have to remember, no matter what you think, the church is still the bride of Christ. Soon to be his wife, you know, with the marriage and, uh, you know, of the lamb that takes place in Revelation 19. Christ is not an abusive husband. He will bring comfort to his bride. So that's enough of that part. That was my second video. Just ultimately, what I believe about Esther, Celestial, after much prayer and testing for over a month, this started even before her video with Marcus. People are already asking me about her. I believe that she is right in some things and wrong about other things. I believe she has the gift of prophecy, but is unrefined, thus allowing a mixture of God, the flesh, and the enemy. And yes, even the enemy can give his own version of words, words of knowledge, predictions that happen, etc. If A, it's already been released by God in the spirit realm, then the satanic kingdom can know about it. We see this according to 1 Kings with the lying spirit that was present in heaven to go lie to the false prophets of Ahab. Or B, if Satan sets up something himself in the spirit and then tells somebody to say it and then he brings it to happen. Like if he tells somebody, this person is doing A, B, and C. And then he go tells another person, hey, lie on this person. So then when it happens, it's like, oh, they prophesy. You know that. I'm not going to say that she doesn't have a zeal for God. And I'm not going to say that she doesn't have a love for the thought of God. I will say that there is an impurity of mixture present. As I just mentioned, as well as other things that I have not at this moment, at least. I've noticed that there are things that she says that literally outright contradict the Bible. Word for word. The thing that makes it so detrimental is that she puts God's name on it. But at the same time, some of the other things that she says agrees with scripture. This evaluation process displays why it's hard for some people to understand, you know, what is it about her? There are people that say, I don't feel right about her. I don't feel right about her in my spirit. These people are sensing the impurity that's present that I just mentioned. But then you have others that say, well, God has used her to bring me closer to Christ, which can happen as well because God can literally use anybody and you can't be drawn to God without the Holy Spirit. I believe it's worth mentioning that God can use somebody if they prophesy or cast out demons and they themselves not overall be right with them. And along these lines, I see a trend of people saying, I know she's true because she says what God showed me. Some of these people don't point to biblical points to know she's true. It relies on the standard of what God showed them or what they say God showed them. That's not how to test somebody biblically. Both kingdoms can show the same thing. And one can be God and the other can be the enemy. 
Hence why the Bible is our standard. And I've noticed a trend that whenever somebody approaches her, not in sarcasm, not being mean, just genuinely concerned, she's rude to them many times. Not every single time. Ultimately, a true prophet that walks with God may misinterpret sometimes, not consistently. We see it happen with Agabus and Acts. However, a true prophet will not contradict scripture. They won't lack love or the fruit of the spirit and they will speak words of correction and judgment within the confines of scripture. I want you to pray with me that she becomes refined in the prophetic and learns how to hear God and not only simply hear God, but test and discern the spirits fully. Because right now it's kind of like she's in the middle and to be able to discern when the enemy is present so she won't speak by him as she has done different times. So she could walk in her full potential because I'm afraid if that doesn't happen, God will send forth the humbling process to break off pride. And again, I want to say, this is how I'm going to know if some of you watched the full video and weren't led by your emotions to become impulsive. Prophets of the new covenant, end time prophets, will speak judgment. However, speaking judgment is for those that are in sin and not those that are walking faithfully with God. Christians will be persecuted and go through hard times. However, comfort and hope is our birthright. 1 Thessalonians 5.9 literally says that we are not appointed to the wrath of God. We are not to be comfortable not doing the work of God. However, those that do the work of God are to be comforted in hard times. You see the difference? And when God brings chastisement to his people, he'll do it in this manner. Look at how Jesus dealt with the church of Ephesus. I know all the things you do. I've seen your hard work and your patient endurance. I know you don't tolerate evil people. You have examined the claims of those that say they are apostles, but are not. You've suffered for me without quitting, but I have this complaint against you. He then chastises and warns them. Look at what he says to Smyrna. I know you're suffering in your poverty. He then talks about the synagogue of Satan and how they will suffer for 10 days, but he'll give them the crown of life. I want you to notice the encouragement that Jesus brings them even in their time period of suffering. He comforts them. Yeah, but Ty, that, that's Jesus. That's not a prophet. Eh? John's the one that gave this prophetic word of comfort, literally showing that Jesus will comfort his people through his people, which this flows with what the Apostle Paul said. You go here to Pergamum. I know that you live in the city where Satan has his throne, and yet you have remained loyal to me. You refuse to deny me. And then he goes on to say his complaints against them. He warns them, tells them to repent, and then he leaves them talking about their rewards to the church in Thyatira or Thyatira, however you want to pronounce it. He says, I've seen your love, your faith, your service, your patient endurance, but I have this against you. He then talks about Jezzy. He warns and brings comfort. Sardis, I know all the things you do, that you have a reputation for being alive, but you are dead. He tells them to repent. And then what does he do? He brings encouragement. All who are victorious will be clothed in white. The Philadelphia church, the faithful church, that's the church that, that he promises will be kept safe. He encourages them. He speaks to Laodicea. He rebukes them. But even in the midst of rebuking them, he gives them comfort in knowing what will happen if they repent. I want you to notice how Yeshua himself dealt with the seven churches, which I believe have prophetic implication to seven church ages as well as seven church spirits that we see in modern day. He issued rebukes. He issued the good things that some were doing. But to all of them, even though that they were drifting off, he gave them comfort. And the Apostle John was the one that prophetically delivered the message. That's how a prophet is supposed to be in the new covenant when issuing warnings to the church. Now to the world, it's a lot different. So I hope this helps. Again, as I said, this is going to be my third and final video that I make uh, about Celestial Esther, unless the Holy Spirit says otherwise. Go back and review the scriptures that I gave you, because again, I don't want you to just simply watch this video. I want you to go look at the scriptures that I gave you, especially with how Jesus did the seven churches. Always, if you like content like this, follow for more.